We've been doing astrophotography for many years now. And we've encountered a lot of problems along the way. So as you can see, all of our shots are useless. There is way too much comma everywhere. So everything is trash. You know, the type of issues that occur for no reason and completely ruin your night. Forcing you to drive back home with no data and crying the whole way. The only time we are in a border one zone and when everything goes perfectly fine, our computer dies. You don't even know how enraged we are right now. Why today? Why? Luckily, we were smart right from the beginning and decided to write down every issue that we encountered over time along with the way that we managed to fix it so that we'd never let these specific issues ruin our night ever again. Recently, we compiled all of these issues and classified them into different categories. Star shapes, noise, artifacts, tracking and guiding, weather, and processing. We laid everything down nicely on a PDF file using the same format as our processing guide, which is very simple to follow and is straight to the point. This file will grow over time as we add more and more issues that you may encounter while doing astrophotography, and of course, how to fix them. As of today, the file contains 52 issues with descriptions, example pictures, and tips. Once you download the file, you will have access to all future updates for free. In this video, we are going to pick 5 issues from one of the categories in this guide. It is likely that some of you have or will encounter one of these issues, so hopefully this video will be helpful. Hello and welcome! I'm here today with my guest Antoine of Galactic Hunter, and I'm here to talk about the terrible, terrible things that have happened in his astrophotography career. Antoine, here, have a cup. Oh, thank you so much. There's nothing in it. <laughs> First! Your first problem. I'll take that back. Thank you. A strange large circle of light is visible in each frame. Why does it happen? Oh, that one. So this is a problem that you might uh, encounter if you are a first time owner of a monochrome camera. Mm -hmm. um, we had this issue uh, with our QHY600M and the QHY filter wheel on our first night. And as you can see, this is just a raw frame. We were trying to image M42. Terrible. And this is just, well, like, oh, we were okay. like so confused. Uh, no idea why this happened. So, Dalia, this happens because there is some type of light leak in your filter wheel. So light comes and hits your filters uh, inside your filter wheel. And see the circular shape here? Oh, the circular shape is made because of the filter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this mostly occurs with unmounted filters. So, for example, with our ZW uh, camera from the past, uh, we had mounted filters and we never had this issue, but with unmounted filters, uh, we had this issue. Now, some companies, including ZW and QHY, include gaskets and tiny masks uh, in their uh, filter wheel uh, packets, but usually they're kind of bad and we tried using them and we still had issues. So, how do we fix this? Right, so what I'm hearing is that the fix for this is to add a high quality filter mask so to each filter. Yeah, which... those are usually, I think, 10 bucks for like a pack of seven or a pack of 10. Uh, it's really not expensive. And I really wish companies like, you know, big companies like ZW and QHY would include those high quality filter masks in their uh, boxes. Interesting. So this is a problem that happens all the time to people and it sucks, right? usually with unmounted filters. And then number two, uh, another way to fix this, if you don't want to wait uh, a week or two to receive the filter masks that you bought online. Uh, by the way, ours are from... Uh, it is from Buckeye Stargazer. Yeah, those ones. Uh, if you guys need filter masks, uh, Buckeye Stargazers, they make really good ones. Um, so if you don't want to wait uh, a week or two to receive them, you could try taping uh, the holes in the filter wheel with black tape, and that might help with blocking the light from passing through and hitting your filters. Wonderful. Amazing. What an icon. Thank, Thank you, you so Antoine. <laughs> but I have another problem for you. So, another problem that occurs. A gray or rainbow colored light ray is seen coming from the outside of the frame. 
Hmm. Why does it happen? So this is because we had a bright star just out of the frame here. So you will see a couple of different examples, including this one with M103 and the Witch Head Nebula as well. Mm -hmm. um, so both times we had a bright star. I know for the Witch Head Nebula it was Rigel, which is extremely bright. And those bright stars sit just out of the frame. And that is because, I mean, that is why there is such a, a crazy bright ray coming into the picture. Um, so it's an annoying artifact to have and um, it's an easy fix but sometimes you don't realize it there until you stack your images so it can be very annoying terrible just terrible worst thing i've ever heard so how do we fix this well you can fix this by reframing your target Ooh, such a simple answer but not something you think about when you're in the field so yeah, you gotta reframe it uh just slightly so that the bright star doesn't affect your image frame anymore right 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 you want to make sure that that light does not come through on the corner of your frame or you can include the star in there uh, so you can reframe either away from the star or to include the star in there whoa 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 that's crazy because <laughs> if you include the star then the, it won't shine against the corner of the camera sensor so it's, mm. it's, it won't have a ray like that insane the most insane thing i've ever heard on this talk show now another problem that occurs that we see Ooh, another thing, a thin, long, elongated, sorry, a thin, elongated object seems to overlay the image. Why? But why? <sighs> That's an annoying one. Um, we had this issue for the longest time, for like a full year until we fixed it. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> uh, so this uh, is actually your hair. So if you see a thin, long strand of hair is a hair <laughs> so if it's been a while since you cleaned your camera sensor or if you bought your camera like a, a long time ago and you never cleaned your sensor uh, now's a good time are you so, saying something yeah you should clean your sensor are you blaming me well you do have a lot of hair i see actually th this the one we had i think was very small so probably mine i don't know uh maybe the cat Wonderful. Please blame the cat. if you have pets if you have hair this is going to be a problem eventually i'm sure so you will see this on your on your images and the more you stack the more you will see you know, the more it's going to be obvious uh, so we suggest you clean your camera uh, sensor uh, with uh, you know there, there are several tools including some you can buy on, on amazon or online uh, like cam uh, digital camera cleaning kit or something but you can also calibrate right you can also calibrate your uh, well the strain of hair artifact should go away if you calibrate your all your frames with like flats because the flats should see the um, the hair in there which will be subtracted when stacking and hopefully it's just gonna go away uh, back then we had no we gave no craps yes <laughs> about <laughs> flats so we never took flats in the past now we do uh, so if you have a hair and you don't want to clean your sensor just take flats and hopefully it's gonna go away Another reason why you should always take flats, but of course, huh? You can also go into Lightroom, right? You can go into Lightroom and yeah, you can try to um, make the artifact disappear using some tools like make wow. it brighter so it matches the sky color. Wow, yeah, what a wealth of knowledge. <laughs> All right, next. Oh, um, another problem we have one or several dark round spots they're visible in all the images why why that's really bad um we had a, a huge issue with that last I summer have a photo. yeah it was terrible we had so many so all these all these uh spots here are actually dust spots now the luckily for us those dust spots were on the sensor window of the camera so it's easy where to is clean. the sensor window well, the camera is here and then the sensor is right here and then there's a, there's a window on top to cover the sensor and all this, the dust was on the window so all we had to do was to blow with a, an air blower and, like a hand and just pass a little thingy on it uh, so hopefully i mean luckily that was easy to fix but for example those ones here are like large like out of focus large and uh, donut shaped kind of so that's how you tell they are on a sensor window because they are pretty far away from the sensor itself, so it's out of focus. 
but if your dust spots are much smaller than this but much like darker and much uh, with more opacity to them uh, they likely are on your sensor itself which is usually more common in DSLR cameras because they don't really have a, a sensor window per se so is that worse or better it was better to have it on the window because it's simple to to, to clean with this allows this our cameras don't really have a window like that mm -hmm. so, so the fix for this would be to clean your camera sensor or your sensor window yeah. you can also calibrate with flats once again flats usually fix most things like that uh, so hopefully the, the, the flats will not the flats again <laughs> will subtract the dust spots from your images let it be known that Antoine did not take any flats oh, for, years. Yeah. for years but now we do, so. <laughs> for years another problem that we see that is quite common that's a, that's a weird one by the way that's a, we, we kept the weirdest one for the end but of course um, some random black squares. So the raw images are overlapped by a grid of just weird, random black squares. Why? Why? So I had this issue when I was in a bottle two zone and it baffled me. What a terrible place to have those squares pop up. It was like two or three hours away from Vegas and I was imaging there and I was so annoyed because everything was going fine before and all of a sudden I got these squares for no reason on all my raw frames and I was I could not believe what was happening. I had no idea what was what was wrong. I restarted everything. I, I cleaned everything. I, I changed cables even and um, nothing. It was always going to happen like that. And that was with the QHY 600 camera. So it's a, a full frame camera, a very, um, a very power hungry camera. So my guess was it has to be something about the cables. Mm -hmm. And even by changing cables, because I always bring two pairs of each cable, um, it would not fix the issue. So this happens because, like those black squares, they happen apparently because of the USB hub. So if you're, if you're using a USB hub to connect like your camera, your filter wheel, your uh, guide cam and all that, and then uh, from the USB hub to the PC or laptop, the USB hub is the issue. So That's terrible. Yeah. A lot of people use those. Luckily, as a last resort, I just connected the camera straight to Directly? the laptop because I had one extra port, luckily. You're crazy. And fix the issue. So if you, if you have the same issue, make sure you connect your camera right away to the laptop and not go through a USB hub, especially a cheap USB hub that will you know, have some issues, especially in full frame cameras. Wow. That is too much. I mean, on the upside, you can still use a USB hub, right? Yeah, you can still use a USB hub if I think if it's powered, so there is two types. There are two types of USB hubs. I think. Two. I think there are only two. Hopefully. Whoa. So you, just regular USB hubs that are not powered to just connect to the laptop with a USB port or cable, or there are USB hubs that are powered, so they also will connect from both. Well, they connect to the laptop, but also they connect to a power source at the same time, to so they have their own power. So much. Yeah. So those ones have their own power, so they don't. They don't feel overwhelmed, I guess, by, by everything else. So they don't suck the energy yeah. out of your power source? Because I'm guessing the, the black square will cure because uh, the power was so low uh, for, from the camera. Incredible. What a terrible, terrible thing to happen to you in the middle of nowhere while you're away from your home. Yeah. Luckily, I was able to fix it after two hours. So, <laughs> And we got the picture of the horse head, the blue horse head nebula. And I love that, that picture. That was at night. Yeah. So anyway, those were five issues. Um, taken from like a list, a huge list of, of a bunch of issues. I don't even know how many there are. But wait, of course there's more, as there's Antoine more. is saying. So uh, as we mentioned in the, in the intro, uh, we have a guide uh, that we have been working on for the past for three, four years. Uh, everything is now compiled. And so I think it's a very useful guide for both beginners and advanced uh, astrophotographers. Um, so it will always grow. So if you download it once, you will always be able to go back to the download For page life. and always get the updated version. And whenever we receive an email or something about a weird issue, we'll just add it to the guide. So pretty much our hope is that in the end, this guide is like complete with like every possible issue you can get in astrophotography. And whenever you get an issue while imaging or while processing or while setting up, 
you can just look it up in there, just control F or whatever and type something and, find and find it there with a with an easy fix. So what that's an amazing innovative I project. I think it's a good idea. Yeah, thank and you. It also for... oh, it also comes with a bunch of cards so for like easy easy looking, like uh, easy easy finding. So a bunch of small cards. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for your time, Antoine. No I appreciate you being here today and talking to us about the terrible, terrible things that we happen all to hate you these issues. out on the field. And of course, you can always find Antoine's PDF guide <laughs> down in the link below, or the links below. She's so into it. Wow, wow. <laughs> I mean, I just love having my own TV show. I'm first too. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, so you will find the download link below. Uh, I think the price is fair. It's the same price as our Pixel Insight guide. Uh, which was it was a both a lot of work and right. they're both very straight to the point so i think it's a it good format it saves you a lot of headache um hi it's me normal me um it saves you a lot of headache for trying to figure out the problems that are happening to you and believe me we've had our fair share of headaches over the years so it's just something that you know we put together with the help of a lot of people from the community just asking yeah. questions seriously and so we covered five of them today. Uh, there is a, a bunch more in the guide. So if you guys want to see them all, uh, it's always nice to have like in, on your phone or in your, on your laptop somewhere, just in case. So we'll see you guys next time. We hope that this video at least helps someone out there with one of these problems. Again, a list of many, right? So we'll see you next time and clear skies. Guys.